Hey everybody, Joanna Lauer here. As a singer, an actress, and a Christian, I know just how important social media can be. It's a place where you can network and connect with new people, keep in touch with friends and family, you can promote your business and even spread the gospel. But social media can also be a place of negativity, stress, posts and images that believers just don't wanna see. The solution, Savior Connect. Savior Connect is a brand new social media platform specifically designed for believers. Much like other social media sites, you can create your own free profile, add pictures, posts, and links, all without having to worry about seeing worldly images and messages. Savior Connect is the place where believers from all over the world can get connected. To create your profile, go to SaviorConnect.com today. Savior Connect. The Christian Social Network. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to another segment of Critical Dialogue. Yes, we want to thank all our advertisers and sponsors, okay? As well as, we definitely want to give a shout-out to Miss Annette Hankerson, okay? Make sure you go learn about crypto trading, NFTs, and much more. Level up on your knowledge for the future, okay? Things are changing, so you need to go ahead on and get the education there. Give Miss Annette Hankerson a call. She's doing some great things. She can help you, all right? All those out there in the California area and all over the world, for sure. Oh, yes. Hey, we are here. Ronald Smith, DJ Ronnie Ron. Got uh, Andrew Crawley here, as long with Pastor Duke White. And, and Bishop Dorsey is in the house, too. Hey, man, we all jumping on here. <laughs> hey, hey brothers, what's going on? God bless. God bless. God bless you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, again, this is Critical Dialogue. We got a great show lineup for you. If you, this is part of under the umbrella of the music industry networks llc and if you are interested in advertising your business or your or or if you're an artist okay if you're an entrepreneur all right we would love to help promote and push what it is that you're doing out there so go ahead on and visit our website musicindustrymakeover.com we're here to help push you as we create platforms and control the exposure because this is what we do all right Oh, yes, God is good. And we got a lot of great other things, uh, uh, excuse me, other things that are happening as well, too. So we'll let you know on that. But, uh, hey, Crawley, how's everything, man? Your your microphone is muted a little bit. Uh, so but go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Byron? Uh, God bless you. Yes, good to see you as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, he unmutes his mic. Uh, hey, how, hey, how, Bishop? Um, how's everything? Sorry about that. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, I, hit, I hit the wrong button. Bishop, oh, okay. how you doing? I'm good, Apostle. How about you, sir? Right, great. Hanging great, awesome. Pastor, there. Duke, Pastor Duke White, what's going on? Coming soon. What's going on? What's going on, guys? Love you guys, man. Mm -hmm. Likewise, man. Likewise. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. You guys well, are hey, amazing. Uh, we hey, in the Red Duke. Shirt Club tonight, dude. I see that. I see that, y'all. Hey, <laughs> you need that. You need that married to the truth, but I ain't too mad because you still got some Jesus. You got some Jesus <laughs> on your shirt, so I ain't too mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, definitely. Um, uh, hey, go ahead, Crawley. Tell us about this book, man. Hey, how folks can get a, get a hold of it and things, man. It was sweeping the nation. Yes, get uh, my book, The New Age Vernacular. Uh, it was a privilege to be invited on a, on a, a call last night with some people over the country, man. And uh, one of the mm -hmm. uh, guys up there had actually read the book. And I didn't even plan on saying anything, man. He shouted it out because he was so impacted by right. the new age vernacular and so i want to let you all know not just because of what i said ask anybody that has read the book how impactful it is how relevant timely it is to the christian faith that's why i love and appreciate people like duke white man he has ever since he's coming in contact with it man he has uh invited me just to speak on it have interviews not only that but he keeps pushing it it's also right there on uh Right there at the mall and uh, whatever, which mall it is? Lynn Haven Mall. Lynn Haven, Lynn Haven mall. mall. So those of you all that are in that area, you all can go to the mall and get your copy right there at the kiosk. Or you can yeah. get it on download. But this book is important. Kate, uh, excuse me, The New Age Vernacular, Exposing <laughs> the Worldly Language that Christians Use. Go to my website, andrewcrawlerjr.com, or type my name in Amazon. It is also on Amazon as well. You will be blessed because it reveals one of the biggest but yet subtle strategies of the devil. And it is so cunning because this is a strategy that he get Christians to willfully partake in. And they don't even know that they're trying to help the gospel and restrict it at the same time. So get my book, The New Age Vernacular. Most definitely. All right. Yes. Okay. 
And uh, if you like to uh, quote unquote sow a seed or whatever, you know, um, in, into what we're doing here, feel free to go check out our Cash App. Okay, it's the lowest two dollars or whatever. If you want to um, give to it, hey, we we thank you so much. We appreciate everyone who has given. All right, because we want to definitely be a blessing to others as we're building. If you want to be an investor in what we're doing, okay, feel free. We would love to talk with you. All right, some great things are on are down the pipeline here. Oh, yes. Well, as I say, this is Critical Dialogue, and you know we're not afraid to tackle subjects because this is what we do. And about, you know, we need more conversations than sermonic presentations. Nothing against pastors. If you're doing it, great. But you know what? We need to have some more understanding and more dialogue. That's why we have Critical Dialogue. And one of the topics tonight is about unifying. Why can't we unify? Okay. Why can't we come together, you know what I'm saying, as the body of Christ? Good question. Why can't we really do that? You know, we, we always talk about it, how we want unity, but when it comes to the execution of it, we always seem to fall short. Not everybody, but but, but just a few. And then um, the problem that I have is when some of us do come together, it's all about one person's agenda, and then not accepting others' um, input Ooh. as well, too. And uh, so I... <laughs> Hey, I didn't mind calling a spade a spade. And yes, uh, I'm, go ahead on and get us started, Ron. Go ahead hey, on and get hey. us started. You know, again, I, I like what uh, Paulie has said for years that, you know, you know, when it even comes to money, how you know the church doesn't have a money problem, but a distribution problem. But the problem is that, you know, we can't decide, you know, on on collectively where where things should go or how we should build or so. Because even with uh, with the world, it's like, OK, yeah, we have all this entertainment and even in gospel music but why do artists gospel artists or christian artists go to what the world's platform is why is because there's not much unity amongst us because there's no support of the artists and we can create our own venues our own communications um our own social media networks just like um save and connect and you all should definitely go join that i mean let's support the the um, christians that are doing some great things that are providing platforms for us why can't us churches come together got 12 churches on one block and again you know you all i mean you all are, are preaching the same thing so <laughs> i mean well we supposed to be difference? preaching the same thing <laughs> <laughs> not no more <laughs> not no more it's a different kind of jesus huh all right but hey 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 that's hey, that's part of my rant hey let's hey let's jump in why can't we unify if you're out there okay <laughs> hey feel free to type in your, your comments whatever or if you'd like to even come on so let me know i'll see you the link and say your piece or whatever ask questions Hey, let's make it happen. This is critical dialogue. Now let's go ahead. And I want to. I'm. A, I'm gonna defer to. Uh, I know Duke said he's passionate about this subject uh, as he has seen hey, it. And I definitely. And I got to go on the record by saying I have seen his efforts. So it has definitely been tied to Duke's heart. Not just something that he says, but something that he definitely works on often. So it would seem as though to me that I could be wrong, but this is something that's on his heart. So I wanted him to start tonight, man. Just uh, when you first saw that this subject topic, before I get into, you know, some nuggets and stuff for tonight, man, I just want to, what's going on, Slater? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he said, hey, that's man. one main reason that everyone wants to be a leader. Most oh, definitely. We, most we, definitely. We, we got to talk be about it. And, and Slater, you know, bro. Hey, yeah. hey, you know, man, you invited to come on the show, man, even if you want to spend about 10 minutes with us or so, man, just to converse, man. But we got to get him on anyway. This is do a whole episode just with Slater, hey, bro. So appreciate hey, that. Hey, uh, shout, shout out to Crystal says gossip is always is always divisive, different denominations, mm -hmm. pride, jealousy, rampant in the kingdom. Hey, let's call a spade a spade. That's what's up. Yeah, go ahead. All right, yeah, what's up, dude? We'll just let you just start us off. Uh, so, I mean, the, really, the, the thing, when I look at my what my call is, the slogan hey, for hey. coming through Jesus and Child of God Ministries is uh, uniting the body of Christ while leading the loss to Jesus. That That's our, fo that's our focus, is uniting oh. the body of Christ while leading the loss to Jesus. And so for 20 years, that has been our heart. So we've been faced with this very issue uh, as we try to get brothers and sisters to connect to each other. Uh, and, 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 and part of the issue is that, well, the biggest issue is that people don't care past their knowledge. So when you don't mm. care past your knowledge, what, yep. what, what, what you bring to the gospel. So whatever part of, of whatever part of God that you don't want to deal with, everyone has to deal with that. <laughs> That's a good point. 
you know, so so if you think it's okay to lie, now we got a Christian that thinks it's okay to lie. You think it's okay to to act out and uh, to not have any integrity? Then now we got to deal with a Christianity that's interpreting the kingdom of God with no integrity. And, and um, from what I've seen is the amount of egos we've we've taken on a corporate map mindset. In the body of Christ, when it's supposed to be a heavenly mindset. I mean, think about the downgrade of going from the mindset of the creator of the universe to the mindset of a businessman. That's a downgrade. Mm. That's not a that's not an upgrade. And we talk I like how you put that, bro. I like how you put that. Yeah, because we talk as the church as if the corporate mindset is bigger than the mindset of the the creator of the universe. We we and that tells us where our heart really is. That we admire the corporations more than we admire the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and so that that's part of the problem, because uh, the scripture clearly says that there be no division amongst you. So we, this is a major error, a huge error, and that we've ignored it and neglected it for too long. So that's the reason why we can't grow as the body of Christ or really have true unity, because again, you know, uh, our mindsets. Are the way they are. We're not on one accord, or not being intentional. Which again, that's probably the, one of one of the main go. reasons. I love when you yeah. say that every time you say it, being intentional. All right, Bishop. All right, go ahead. Why? Why can't we come together, black and white Christians as well? So you know, hey. You know, brother Ron, I don't even know where to start, man. I, I'm. I mean, you know, words have jumped in my head like. Um, what Duke was talking about. Um, you know, I, I would say this. He said, depart from him, you workers of iniquity, because we knew him not. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it really comes down to something um, that Duke cats into, right? Majority of Christians will be on time for work and late for church. Majority of Christians don't pray. We don't pray, and 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 prayer is communication with God. I, I'll I'll keep I'll just keep it simple, it right? What you love, you spend time with. Correct. Correct. Right. It, 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 if if you can list three things that you absolutely love. The, and, and you find that you don't spend time thinking about it, talking, working, mm -hmm. preserving, planning, then I'm going to tell you you're lying to yourself and whatever it is you said that you love. Now you're talking good. Right? Oh, yeah. And, and, and we don't really have good. that. We, we, <clears throat> have, we have no fruit. We have no su substance. We, we, we have nothing quantitative to say that he is who we say he is in our life. We don't. We don't think enough of him. And I had this conversation with some people just today. I said, I'm not asking you if that if that person came across your mind. I'm asking you, do you think enough of him? So you thought about him, but did you call mm. him? You thought about him, but did you go check on him? You thought about him, but Actually. like, yeah. So, so if he is who we say he is, why is there this big absence of us spending time trying to please him, become more like him, grow into him, be obedient to him? I, 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 I question it. Because we don't believe. All right. Hey, so the question is, again, <laughs> why can't we unify? Why can't we come together as the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in the faith, in the fold, the sheep, whatever? Or so, okay, why can't we come together? And, and and do great things for the kingdom. All right. Uh, oh, let me say this. So real quick, ahead. brother Martin, that that we don't mind doing great things. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Right. Y'all watch uh -huh. what you do. Watch we we don't mind great. We don't have a problem with as long as it shines right on us. Uh. <laughs> I, I I knew it was coming. I knew yes. it was coming. Yeah, you know that was you we know that was it. coming. We we got to deal with that. I hope yes. some leaders and if you know some leaders that are yes. watching and need to watch, share this if they can't get on the live tonight. Share it with them even after this broadcast because we do need to be reminded of some things because there are simply some people who do have good intentions 
and just mm -hmm. need to be simply reminded we're human that's why jesus said as often as you do this do this in remembrance of me it's not that we don't know that he loves us but oftentimes we have to be reminded as human beings of some things that's why you just can't tell your spouse you love them once and then that's just be enough we have to be reminded of some things and so it is now tonight there are some people that I know that are great, that really have a heart, that want unity, but you need to be reminded of some things. And so with that said, Ron, I want to start this list. I put a couple things up about what come to my mind about, because the question tonight is, why can't we unify? And uh, first of all, we need to really understand that uh, before I get into and bring some points up on the screen. First of all, we got to understand that um, our, we got to ask ourselves, what is our definition of unity? Because what we also got to understand is that unity is not the Unitarian Universalist mindset that has now crept up in the church where everybody, all things go. And, you know, this Carlton Pearson type doctrine and stuff like that. Not everybody not going to make it in. As a matter of fact, most won't make it in. That's not Crawler's opinion. The Bible that we call the Word of God say that. So what we have to do, and I also say on the offset, one of the things that came to my mind is one of the things that's standing in the way of us unifying is uh, is false doctrine. And not only that, but a love for the world that we'll talk about later on. But there's a lot of different things about why, because God wants us to be unified and stuff like that. But why aren't we unified? So, Ron, I'll, I'll just go ahead and just put this obstacle on there and just let us, you know, pick apart some of the things to see, like, why is it that we can't unify? Right. We'll All right. And yeah, why are you doing it? I'm... I'm um, Byron says he used to be a King James only person when he was a mature Christian and allowed that to um, to kept from fellowshipping with lots of wonderful saints of God because they didn't use the KJV ver version. Tradition is not always a good thing. Slater says uh, m most of us have double vision. We claim to have God's vision while pushing our own personal visions in his house. Oh, yes. can you repeat that again, please? Yes, most of us you know have what? double vision. <sighs> oh. Yes. Here's a Man. good question. Here's a question that I have. Because, like I always say, the Bible lets us know there are checks and balances to some things. Here's a question that I have. What makes your vision a godly vision and mine not? Ah. <laughs> and do ah. we have anything to go on? Because it should be the yes. word of God, Brahma, because I'll tell you this. Right. Oh, man, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But anyway. Because yeah. you know, I got some, I got some good, kind-hearted people out there. I, I, we'll get into it in one of the slides. But anyway, I'm excited. Yeah. Well, again, hey, if y'all got any questions or comments, feel free to join in on this conversation. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I would also say, also say, a lack of consistency uh, in in doctrine, uh, like 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 uh, like the Apostle said, uh, but a lack of consistency also uh, in in character development as well. Um, you know, because because we are battling with the spirit and the flesh, but the issue is when we're in our flesh, we don't like to say it, so we still act like it's in the spirit. <laughs> and yeah. then into because we don't want to be transparent, because we have to pretend to be holy all the time. And so when people get fed up with that inconsistency, they uh -huh. distance themselves, and so then they start creating their own versions uh, out of disappointment, out of hurt, out of inconsistency, and that's another reason why. That's good, dude. That's good. All right, man. Uh, okay, we, we got a, we got um, two two points up here. Go ahead, Crawley, if you want to elaborate on that. Yeah, so the first one that came to mind, I want to put it on the screen so we can dive into this because what we're talking about, we want to make sure we're talking about why can't we as the body of believers unify. First of all, I say this. We do understand that God, that God's church will end up being unified. We know this. If those of us that don't know this, we have a lot to be encouraged about. God will have his body, the true remnant will be unified in the end, and in the end we will be standing. So we're not coming across this as if we lost hope in unity. But with all that said, I know sometimes we can be so smart that we overlook the simple. And we got to understand that we play a part in either hindering unity or fighting for unity. So we have to ask ourselves the, the self-examination question as a church body of believers as a whole, and then us individually, us individually as leaders. Why? What part can I do? Or what part can I change about myself to help me be more compatible or to make sure that if anybody stand in the way of unity, it won't be me and quote unquote my ministry. So, but with that said, look at what's on the screen. Why can't we unify? Here's one of the things that we got to first ask ourselves. Do we really want unity? 
<laughs> because here's one thing that I do know about we as church and we as believers, and we got to watch ourselves because any one of us can fall privy to this. And this is why self-examination is always key. Consistent self-examination. Why? Because sometimes we can be on autopilot. To where we know the right things to say, we know the right things we need to advocate, but when it comes down to implementing those things and really acting them and really counting up the costs of bringing those, making those things happen, there's a gap there. And now we got to sit back and ask ourselves, I preach unity, I say we need it, I'm asking all the time, why aren't we more unified as a church? But here's a question, do you really want it if you know all that true unity entails? Why now look at the sub points here. Do you really want it? Because if you really want it, you got to understand what it's going to cost you. And one of the things that it's going to cost you is your church branding. Here's a problem that we have and that we've had for so long. Uh, thanks to Constantine and, and not only that, uh, the Catholic church that has infiltrated the borders of the Protestant church and different things like that. And on and on there's other different things. But here's one thing that we got to ask ourselves. If I really want unity, am I willing for my shrine of my church brand to die to make kingdom unity happen? Because one of the biggest issues about the church is that there's too many kingdoms in the kingdom. And so with that said, it's just like this. I'm going to leave. I'm going to put this parallel up and then I'll let y'all we kind of pick it about pick it apart. It's just like this. If you if the goal is to make a cake. You got to have eggs, you got to have sugar, you got to have butter, you got to have flour, you got to have milk. But here's what, the, here's what we try to do in our definition of unity. We try to take all those things that I, if we try to bake a cake of unity, we try to put all those things and keep them in their same packaging and just put them all in the bowl. Mm. Think about it. You can't make a cake. We'll put the butter still in the wrapper in the bowl. We'll put the egg still in the shell in the bowl. We'll take the carton of milk and just set it in the bowl and be like, hey, we're about to bake a cake. No, we're hey, not. Hey, hey, because are, here's are. one of the things that we got to do to understand <laughs> is this. In order, for, in order to bake the cake of unity, everything that's going to have a major ingredient to be part of the cake got to die to its own individual mm. identity. So guess what? The egg can't help the cake out unless it be cracked. The oh. butter has to be, you have to take that butter out the wrap and then it's got to be melted. The flour has to be sifted, people. Come on, God. Listen, the milk, you can't just be prideful and be like, hey, I'm milk and nobody else's milk. Yeah, but guess what? Milk, we're going to need you to be poured out. Hallelujah. Mm. In order mm. to bake the cake of unity, every individual ingredient has to die to its own ambition and identity and be mixed in with all the other ingredients, therefore no longer standing alone, but for the greater good of baking the cake of kingdom oh, unity. Oh, man, As man. a fat man, I would say, could you use less, <laughs> less visuals? Because I'm seeing somebody just jack up a cake and I'm getting really frustrated. Because <laughs> if I just saw somebody putting the eggs in the shits, you know, you will get mad. What are you doing? So... <laughs> but but you're, you're so right though and, and I just why I love the examples that we do have when we have like a John the Baptist mm. where he does say it's, it's time for me to decrease and him increase see that's okay that, that's a beautiful thing you know what I mean it's, look at Jonathan he gives his shield and his sword to David and said hey it won't be me I'm gonna stand by my father but it won't be me that comes against you you know, he gives them, a, you know, and so when you look at this, this concept, uh, you watch the P, I don't know what, what you guys believe, but uh, Peter owned a fleet of boats, yet he left the boats behind and followed Christ and became a student, a disciple, when he was already a successful businessman. So when, when, we, when we see this unity, there's a flow of, of, of that where, where, where even though we all have different gifts and talents, we're all submitted to God. We're all submitted to the will we'll of God. That. See, that's something you can't fake. That's something you can't fake. But what happens is when there's the bigger point where, where we do see the disciples struggle with it, we struggle with it with ourselves, where we want to prove ourselves that fast. Even though we're using a righteous agenda, we've stepped out of the will of God, but with the right oh. intentions. All right, hey, look, I want to go to some of these comments here, man. Oh, man, very powerful here, but man. British says, no people don't want unity. This is inside and outside of the church. Slater, it says, motives for, for building churches 
ministries are also reasons for a separation. Church was a place of training discipleship. It's now a spiritual Starbucks. Churches are now consumer driven, trying to create serve people with their favorite beverage and not the truth. OK, if I don't like what I'm serving, then I go somewhere else that serves what I want. Man, <laughs> uh, man, uh, my man, uh, Byron says, as a black man that goes to a predominantly white church, I have never heard of a black pastor or bishop weep or lose sleep because he couldn't reach white folks. He's just saying from his experience. <clears throat> so pretty interesting there. Well, and I mean, on one of the slides, okay. on one of the slides, hey, oh, if that's, oh, I know who that is. That, uh, listen, y'all got, well, look, one of the, we got a cook in the house, but anyway, I hey Kathleen, thank you so much for watching tonight. Hope you're being blessed. Good to see you. Uh, but yeah, man, one of the things we got, and we gonna, I was gonna bring up the racial reconciliation thing. I got it in another slide. If you want to save that to the end and bring oh, it back, I think that'd be good. End. So, right. but here's one thing we gotta understand about church branding: pastors, if you're watching, bishops, if you're watching, denominations, if you're watching, uh, ambitious leaders, if you're watching, if you're gonna be a future leader one day in the church, understand this. Here's one of the things that I see so much. And it goes back to, I think, Duke, somebody mentioned about having a CEO mentality, which is never supposed to be crept in the church. See, yes, the church has business affairs, but it's a family that has business affairs instead of a business that's only sometime have family affairs. And so we got to understand that. But with all that said, church branding now gets in the way because, like you said, I want to be seen. What's, what is coming together going to do for my ministry? And this is that's a mindset right. that we have. Uh, and I've asked a couple of pastors, a couple of leaders of this. I said, are you willing for your church to die if your church dying means the greater good for the community of believers in your region? Because how many times have I said the great apostle Paul, when he wrote to churches, he didn't see churches like we see churches where there's every church on the corner, three churches in one uh, strip mall. No, no, no. When Paul right. was talking to the church, he was talking to a geographical area and all of the, he was referencing all the believers and any believers in a given city, town or geographical region. Paul was not mentioning your church, my church, like churches like we have it. And this is why we need to understand, do I love the regional body of believers? Mm. more it's just not more than my own individual organized church but you know what this is why we got to ask ourselves if we really want unity because i'm convinced a lot of leaders as presently constructed don't want unity because they love their own individual ministries too much so much so that they mm. idolize a thing that we have come you know, to serve and call it in the name of Christ. Absolutely. That's the church deep. is a great place. Watch this. This is going to sound crazy when I say it, but the church is a great place for rebellious <clears throat> leaders with potential to hide out at. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. The church is a great place for rebellious leaders with potential to hide out at. And they've, they've always been people of potential. Potential is not their struggle. Uh, uh, being a leader is not their struggle, but they're rebellious in the core of their hearts. And, and so, but because the people a lot of times are so broken, they can rule over them. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, they can become the leader. That's why they can lead so many people, but never go nowhere. You never see nobody become better. You never see nobody develop and grow. And a lot mm -hmm. of times the reason why people leave churches and don't want to be affiliated with denominations and things like that is because when you, it was like, where... Who is producing the results? And if you see that in the non-denominational church, this is why there's a mass exodus out of the black church into the non-denominational church. Out of why all you churches. See a, yeah, why, you say, why you see a mass <laughs> exodus out of Catholicism? But now it's, watch this, now it's a mass exodus from the church because they're seeing more results in the world. Wow, wow. Hey, Bishop, go ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole lot that could be said. Um, I agree. Um, I, I think I think a lot of this comes down to relationship um, over gifts, right? We, mm -hmm. we um, Jesus never operated out of a gift. <laughs> when Jesus did ministry, he did not minister from a gift, right? People say, "Well, Bishop, where you get that from? Simple gifts and callings come without repentance." Right. Jesus didn't need to change his mind. Jesus didn't need a savior. Right. He he was that. Um, 
But here's the thing. We think that 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 people who are unselfish cannot be self-centered. Mm. We we mm. we, I, we I, are filled I, I got, with self-centered that. people. Right? The reason why we do what we do is because of what it means or what it does for us. Right? We we there we've touched is. on this on different shows. There's two ways to spell profit. Most of us spell it <laughs> P-R-O-F-I-T. Right? Yeah. And that's the problem in the church, because we want the prophets to bring the profit right. to a single person, to a specific person, to right. And 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 all of this is offensive to God. It's <laughs> offensive to God, right? So I was talking to Duke, I think it was a couple weeks ago, and he told me. Stop talking about that. Stop talking about that. Because we're going to do this as a series. The, the Lord gave me a word about between two thieves, right? So you can be at Calvary and kneeling at the wrong cross. Mm. You, you can literally be at mm. Calvary, but not be at the cross that has the Lord and Savior on it. You've got options, right? <laughs> you you. Right. The, the, wow, wow, the, there's wow. not one. There's not just one man hanging at Calvary. Right. So yeah, if, that's you, don't, if you can't identify, yeah. right, who's on the cross, right, then then you're not walking in the in the glory of the Lord. You're you're not carrying out the kingdom purpose of God. Right, right. Hey, again, we're talking about why can't we unify? Why can't we unify? If you want to join in on the conversation, feel free to do that. Okay. Hey, this is what we are here for. All right. Slater says uh, the brand should be Jesus. He said, if I be lifted be. up, I will I will draw all men unto me. Lift it up from the earth. If we do the lifted, he'll do the drawing. Exactly. Let's market Jesus. Let's you know, I want to say this too. Yeah, yes. I, I want to say something about that. I want to say something about that. Uh, I, I found that the, some of the, the most annoying people that you will see annoy leadership is actually people that's in their word. People that that that, that say, that's "Hey, why that is now that, that is a hundred percent true." Because so what happens is when you get somebody who's really saying, who really wants to submit, and because really, because submission doesn't mean weakness, right? So when somebody's really doing this God thing for real, doing this Bible thing for real, good. and they go that's to right. a church that's planned, and the pastor gets upset. <clears throat> And then the next thing you know, what you know how they said in the last day they'll call good evil and evil good. That's part of the issue. Is you got some people that will ask questions. Why, why do we do this? Why are we doing this? And they, they're really trying to uphold the standard and then they get blasted. Well said. Wow, wow. Hey, Andre and I, says yeah. uh, and, I, and I don't want to yeah. we have become too results driven. We must rest in the process of sanctification. That is what well said. And you know, and sometimes and 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 you could tell. You can tell when you have an insecure ministry because they feel they have to prove to God and to us by results that they are doing the will of the Father. Ah. See, you got to understand this about the Bible. When you go and look at people in the scriptures, uh, like some of the apostles, and, 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 and when they were found having no money and they said, we look like the fools and, and the butt end of the joke to society, you understand that it wasn't, oh, this is how many people we got saved. Let us blast this across social media. This is how many people we fed for the homeless. Let us blast this. You know, it was really, we get joy knowing that we are effective. If we do whatever God called us to do, and if effects come out of it or not, because here's one thing we got to realize. When we're in a world, when we're in a fallen world, it ain't going to be a lot of results like we would like to think in so much that if most people are going to die and go to hell, then in heaven, God is just want us to be good with the fact that are we doing what he said do? And did we do what he said, even if nobody got saved? Because guess what? God don't just use us to save people, to help evangelize or to help grow people up. Guess what he also used us for that, that, that would show no results until the other side of glory. He used us to prove that he is a responsible eternal father. Why? Because there's going to be some people that they won't even find out that they're going to hell until they get to the other side. And they're going to look at God and be like, God, why didn't you warn me? And God's going to be like, you know what? I sent that Christian. 
I sent that Christian. So you can't say I'm irresponsible. I told you through them. But that gets no earthly results. But God can say, you can't tell me that I'm not a responsible, sovereign God. And we have to be good with that. We have to be good with just sowing seeds, even if it don't yield results that we can put on the paper and hand the report into our denominational or even our pastoral higher work. But, but see, can we can we can can we pull that apart a little bit, Apostle? Yes, sir. So to be results driven in God means that God is pleased. Right? My, my what what I'm what I'm defining as results is the fact that I am pleasing in his sight. It has nothing to do what what results are, are available for man to see. That that n n that's not how I measure my relationship with God, right? My, my relationship with God is not about me proving that I heard God. It's my obedience and my love for Him that causes Him to prove, right, that I heard Him. If you right? know, it's my faith yeah. in action that causes me, right, to become the evidence. It's not. It's not something that I'm doing because. I want to be seen or, or I want to prove that I heard him. I want to prove that I love him. Right. And in my proving that I love him, the results that he gives me are not always tangible, not even to the brothers that I'm that, that I'm talking to right now, not even to the brothers on this broadcast. What Mark does in the realm of love and obedience for the Lord, you may not even see it. Right. Mm -hmm. But but that doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not results driven because it pleased him. Right. He saw it. He he knew what it was. Right. The, the evidence that man will see may not ever come. Apostle, the the way that we want it to. It may not ever carry that type of notoriety, but we have to be OK with that because it was pleasing in his sight. When uh, when he put that uh, and shout out to Harris Sham and when he put that up there, we're talking about the results that we know what results driven are. So we talk right. about typical church results, the stuff that could be putting down on paper. And so I definitely get it. You know what I'm saying from the standpoint of that that numbers driven. You know what I'm saying stuff too. And I and, and I think a good question. Here's a good question for all of us Christians, especially the leaders. If you could go on, if if if. If you kept preaching and no one ever joined your church in 15 to 20 years, if no one ever says, I want to receive Christ because of what you've done in years, if you can be convinced that you are still sharing what God wants you to share and do, would you still do it? Even if it gets no <laughs> earthly results, because yeah. this is a question that we have to ask, because I get it. Uh, we as human, we do things for results and we do things because of results. That's not always nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to the kingdom, we're not going to always see that, and that's why the joy of the Lord has to also be our strength to continue being, someone said it already, consistent. I do what I do knowing that I might not see no numbers, knowing that when I'm trying to talk and enlighten and train and leaders, like there might not be, there ain't nobody knocking Andrew Carter's door down. But guess what? I still preach it if it's a thousands of knocking the door down because I'm convinced it's sound doctrine and it's what the body needs, even if nobody wants it. And we have to have that type of fortitude to remain consistent as long as it can be determined that God is pleased with what we are sharing and what we you, are doing. You know, I, I, because it's yeah. not, sometimes in this place of business, it ain't a lot of encouraging results. But that consistency in the earth, in the eternal life, will prove benefit. That's no, watch this, Apostle. Go ahead, go ahead. I, mm -hmm. I preached, the, the Lord gave me a message on Sunday. And this mm -hmm. was a part of the message. The message was a living testimony. Right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord asked me a question. And he said, I want you to ask everybody in the sanctuary and watching online the same question. He said, if you're a living testimony, he said, if your book was on sale, if your book was available at Barnes and Noble, what section would it be in? Would That's it be a good a question. Comic book? That's would a good question. Would it be a horror book? Would it, would it, That's good. Yeah. That's good. Would, would, would it would it would it be a gossip column? What where would they find your testimony in Barnes and Noble? Because you're a living testimony, right? Right. You're, he is the author and finisher of your faith. So where would your book be? Would it be a pop up book? Right. Right. Or right. would it be a love story? Luke, you was about to say something. So so one of the things that I look at is that uh, 
you know, I, I remember when I first started with Coming Soon Jesus, all I wanted to do was use the shirt sales to empower churches. Like if the church needed a new drum set, if the church needed new pews, if it was a hole in the wall, whatever the church needed. The, 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 because the Bible talked about a ministry called the Ministry of Helps, right? So there are these real people that have no agenda. They just want to be whatever God wants them to be in whatever situation. So they can they can go to different churches. And, and, and there was a real connection with ministries. And what happened to me was this. I would connect to all of these pastors in a real genuine way to facilitate a hole in their ministry where there was. And I would fill that gap. And the pastors would then want to put a chain around my neck and tell me that I'm not allowed to go anywhere else and offer these gifts to anyone else because I'm their member at their church. And I'm like, I'm not a dog. I'm submitted. I'm loyal, but I'm not an animal. I can love my other brothers. And, and I started to feel constricted by the division in the body of Christ because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to go from being under white oppression to church oppression. <clears throat> and a lot of people are being oppressed by the church. And because... <clears throat> No, go ahead. Go ahead. You finish. Saying. Saying a lot of people have been oppressed by the church because the, the people that we call pastors and leaders really don't even understand leadership and they, they don't even understand authority, but they've been abused and they know it. So they've been abused by power. So they know what power is and they abuse the people and then they and they try to trap people versus mm -hmm. liberate people. Hey amen, hey amen. All amen. right. Hey, again, hey, y'all, we, we're talking about why can't we unify, okay? Unify. Hey, we take your questions and comments as well. All right. Um, 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 Andre said he agrees with the bishop and believes that uh, he's referring to is simply bearing fruit, Psalms 1. Sometimes the Lord is the only one eating the fruit from your tree. Now, that's a good thing if you want the Lord to come and eat from your tree. That is a that is a blessing. Yeah, the there. audience audience of one, like I like to say, the audience of yeah. one, which is also what Bishop right. was referring to, the audience of one. Uh, now, and before we move on to this this slide, I do want to throw this in there. Also, can you remain consistent? What about the reverse the reverse of results driven? Are you willing to preach sound doctrine even if it preaches your church empty? What if nobody likes what? Because here's one thing I know about yeah. Jesus, who was the perfect pastor, who was the perfect Christian leader. He said things and crowds dispersed after he said them. And he knew that they would. He said stuff that folks didn't like that he knew they didn't like. And they started saying, hey, this guy is weird. I don't know if we want what he's cooking. Kind of like what Slater brought up. But here's the thing. Pastors, Christian leaders, will you preach sound doctrine even if you know it's going to affect your money that the church coming in on the negative life? Because it's sad how many, how many meetings I've been in open and closed with Christian leadership. So they say, yeah, we know that, but we can't preach that because folks ain't going to like it. Yeah, that. we know that, but we got to hold church and get out by this amount of time because they ain't going to come because they want to be out for the football game. And I am telling you, if we hold to the standard of Christ, which is a remnant standard, sometimes you may preach your congregation thin. Will you still right. preach it? As long as you can determine, like what Bishop mentioned, the audience of one, because we also have to start there. But with that said, let's go to the next slide so we can move well, on. Can, can what I you see on the screen, we want it on our terms. Can I yes, say sir. Something real yes, sir. Quick yes, sir. Yeah. So just, yeah, uh -huh. 30, just 30 seconds of thinning out the church, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes, sir. It, 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 it troubles me when a young man <clears throat> who is a competitive swimmer and is unsuccessful and, and cannot consistently uh, uh, win, right, um, yeah. in matches that he participates or meets that he participates in, um, changes his gender and is Jim, now, Bishop don't do that. And is don't now do that. allowed to swim with women and is breaking records, and we don't have a problem with that. We, we and, don't have... Yeah, let's pr let's preach it thin, right? Yeah, yeah. Because there's a thin yeah. line between love and hate, right? Okay. Yeah. And there's all, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. and I'm yeah. not hating on nobody. I'm not hating on anybody. All right, hey, y'all, let's go ahead on to the church. All right, hey, hey, great. Hey, we're yes. definitely going to get more into that as well, too. Yeah, because that's a, that's a also on another slide coming up, too, that we can talk about that. But let's get right. to and we can bring the other comment up. We why can't here's a question for the night for those y'all just tuning in. Why can't we unify as the body of believers, as the church, quote unquote, meaning as church is presently constructed, generally speaking, as we know it? Here's the thing: one of the reasons why we can't unify is because we want unity with our American Westernized selves on our terms. 
We want godly unity on our terms, or we want to call it godly unity if it is on our terms. So what do we mean by that? First of all, what is on our terms of unity? How, we want to define unity the way we want to define it. And here, and here I got this, uh, in parentheses, racial reconciliation. Fruits, not roots. Now, what do I mean by that? And someone brought it up. is because I know a lot of well-meaning, good-hearted people who, who their main agenda, their main focus is racial reconciliation with the church. They want to see how many com how many congregations we can do we can see look like the colors of the rainbow where col all colors are represented and we can sit down and we worship together. Let me start let me preface what I'm about to say by saying this. This is no knock against my brothers and sisters who carry a racial reconciliation uh heart. They want to see all races unified in the church. I get it. I get I sometimes that does come from a pure place. But let me also say this. When we make movements out of rec racial reconciliation, to be honest, I think we do that as a reaction to whatever the narrative is on the is on the six o'clock news. Mm. Why do I say this? Because racial reconciliation is not a unity issue. Let me say that again. Just because the world says it is. And Black Lives Matter says it is. Don't mean that that's biblical unity. Now, here's the thing. Is that a problem within the church? It is. But whenever you make that the foundation of root cause, here's where you're mistaken. Racial reconciliation is not a root cause of division within the church. It is just a fruit, not the root. Why do I say that? Because all white churches aren't even unified amongst themselves. All black churches aren't are not even unified amongst themselves. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to unify disunity and call it godly disunity. unity. Here's what we got to realize. Disunity. We, we got to understand this. See, the thing that is making us disjointed, it goes beyond color and it goes deep to a mindset because we got to understand that we got to ask ourselves, why aren't we even unifying in color? Because I promise you, white church, if you want to join with the black church, you're joining with a whole disjointed, ununified body of believers that can't even agree on hardly two things anymore. And guess what? Black church, if we want to unify with the white church and Mexican and so on and so forth, uh, Latino, whatever the case may be, guess what? They are not unified either. So until we get down to the gist of our disunity, which we're going to bring up some scriptures here later when we get to it, we're going to understand that if we get to the root cause, racial reconciliation, because it's not a root but a fruit, we should see that changing. But we got to focus on the root cause. And we got to make sure that our definition of unity lines up with God's definition of unity. Because here in America... You can get black, white, green, red people all to join together in one congregation. And guess what? The American mindset still reigns supreme because we don't even still think the same and even think we should. We celebrate disunity in mindset when God wants us to think and have the same judgment in all things. And that's good stuff right there, man. Hey, if y'all got any comments or questions on it, on what, what has been said so far, and join in on the conversation, feel free to go ahead on and state your claims. Because, again, we want to try to get to, well, <clears throat> I don't know if we get to the bottom of it, but, hey, let's just get to some sort of understanding. Why can't we unify within the body of Christ? Right? Well, we and Apostle said it with that last segment. I think one of the things that, he, that you said initially um, holds true. We want we want God on our terms. Correct. Right. If 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 I didn't know better, I would say that we think we're the ones who were holy and sovereign, and and we brought mm. salvation to God. Yeah, Bishop, come on now, come on now, sir. You can say that again. Yeah, I I, I would think <coughs> that 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 somewhere we've gotten this thing twisted. We've we've gotten this thing turned. That that God is supposed to be so so in love and benevolent to us that we are the center of his work. And I, I can tell you where that comes from. Uh, honestly, it's the personal relationship with Jesus. See, that personal relationship with Jesus has become the catalyst behind 
why I'm like it's almost like we're we're the narcissist and God is the 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 mate that we abuse because if, if, if this relation if God wants me then He has to deal with me the way I am and He can't I I can tell God what He has to put up with but He doesn't tell me anything I can I'm in charge of my personal relationship with Jesus and, and so so when someone's trying to understand what a relationship with God is, they're looking at someone with a personal, not, not someone who's submitted, not someone who's uh, uh, following the will of God, not someone who's obedient, but somebody who's, this is, this is a personal relationship. And so that begins to take on its own abstract meaning. And, and so now you got, well, since they have a personal relationship, I can love God how I want. And you can love God how you want. And now yeah. we have no standard. That ties into Kathleen's uh, comment too. What Duke just said about personal relationship. Right. A lot of us are broken and do not know how to allow God to yeah. fix us, and that's that that comes from that personal relationship because we have to do the work. The work is getting in the Bible, and that, and, and and to me, that's really what Duke was saying. That goes right along with what he was saying. We got and God I, trying to work on our heart, and we telling Him what to do. And you I'm gonna. This um, part, but not that part. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I want to even go into tie in for us. Uh, Maurice brought, brought up a very good point. You know what I'm saying? The benefit. If if we, we cannot unify if money isn't in, isn't involved at all. Oh, so, oh yeah. Well, yeah. But that's because your heart is your ATM card. So, <laughs> all right, Bishop. Okay. You know, and, 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 and the unfortunate thing is, is that people have stronger affections for the material things than they do for the eternal things. We, 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 we fight that, right? We fight that even in the church, right? People love you because of what you do for them. The oh. minute you stop doing for them. You're preaching there. Yeah. I, I've they, seen they, it in reverse. I've seen it in reverse, brother. Check this out. And this real quick. This, this, I was with this one ministry and they, the, the only person that knew that I was given, you know, $1,300 a month. The only, the only ministry, the only person knew was the pastor. The people would dog me out. Say, I'm a Bible thumper and I'm this and I'm weird and I preach everywhere I go and I can't do nothing but talk about the Bible. You know, and all this other stuff, they dog me out. Well, they didn't know that I was supplying the ministry, helping them get from one place to one, helping them pay their mortgage. helping. Them. They didn't know that I was doing all the stuff that I was doing. And one day the pastor got tired of it and he told everybody that same service more people came and apologized to me than I ever have been apologized to in my entire life because they found out I was giving money. Yeah. Even though they were ripping my heart out, making me question my walk with God, challenge, destroying me on the inside, making me think I was being religious when I was really just trying to please right. God. But again, and when they found out I was giving money, now they're like, I'm sorry, brother, if I ever mistreated you. <laughs> and that's coming up what she just brought up also is coming up in a future slide and i'll say this with what kathleen just put up is this is we got to understand that and it goes back back to the slide of, of 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 changing the definition we can't define what godly unity is we need to let the bible define it but here's one thing that we think unity is and we think is biblical unity and we're sadly mistaken in this day and that is and it kind of goes along with what she said that is, we got to understand that the universe's Unitarianism ain't unity. And here's one thing I'll say. You got to understand, godly unity brings separation. Godly unity has in it a lot of discretion. It has in it, so we got to understand, God doesn't want the whole world to be unified. God never wanted the whole world to be unified. Guess what happened? Read Genesis chapter 11 and you'll find out what happened the last time there was a joint worldly unity effort for one cause. God came in and intervened and busted it up. So we got to understand God only yeah. wants unity. Our Bible. Yeah. yeah. God only wants unity within the remnant of Christ, those who are sealed by the precious Holy Ghost, not people who have a form of godliness, not people who have a religion, not people who love church and substitute church thinking that they love Jesus just only because they love church. None of those, only the true remnant, God wants true unity. So right. therefore, God's unity brings separation and we can't change the unity definition. And that's one reason why we can't unify because we want unity on our terms. Again, we understand that, and definitely for sure. But again, why, again, for us coming together, the remnant, 
okay we have to be intentional about that what does that look like you know why oh, why well, can't you i think it, i think uh, for the remnant it starts <laughs> with if my people who uh, are called by my name would humble themselves and pray there you go right it didn't <laughs> we leave off the humble right oh. <laughs> yeah we, we we have a lot of conversations with god that that are not appropriate conversations right so humble yourselves and pray it is in the prayer yes sir right and i love this because duke because pastor duke said it and, and apostle crawley uh had had mentioned it as well it is in that conversation with god right that that in your seeking of his face he will tell you what to turn away from he will tell you what to put down. He will tell you, right? Mm -hmm. He will show you what has to be cut off. He will show you what has to be separated from you. And it is at that point that we will either be his servant or we will be the rich young ruler. It is at that point that we're either going to say, yeah, God, I'm willing to give that to you. We'll either say the price is too high or no matter what the cost. And 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 that in, in its in and of itself, the microcosm has to have the same elements as the macro. You can't you can't have one thing in your personal walk, right, and expect to see something different in the corporate walk. It it, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, because because I can tell you why. Because see, when you're really truly doing this God thing and you really truly walk with God, you understand that there's going to come sometimes where you are the one showing the majority of the love and people not showing it back. And you can you and you have to be okay with that, and 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 see when you're faking it or where you are not fully matured, you will think to yourself, I, I got to get something out of it. It don't mean you bad, but you might not be matured. But when you really walk in this thing out, you might say, Well, I have to do this for the cause of unity or for the mission's sake. In other words, does the body of Christ, do the real, does the men and women of God have the mindset if a grenade dropped? I would jump on the grenade for the sake of the body of Christ, for the sake of the church, for the sake of unity. See, see and, and that's a problem when we got military and corporate mentality that has matured past the church. That And that's one of the reasons why there's so much more developed than the church is. That's why that's because because they understand hey, sometimes you might have to jump on a grenade for your brother and sister. Man, that's a <laughs> right. so, see, so yeah, so see, in the church, in the church, we don't jump on a grenade, we push somebody else on a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't jumping on that grenade. So yeah, we'll go to this comment and then we go to I'll throw the scripture up. Since we're talking about Bible, let's see what the Bible says about it because it's in the word, but I, I don't know if we're gonna like it. But yeah, let's go. Andre says what? Uh, what, the, you issue, want to read the issue I have been struggling with the most is that it's easier to do that individually, but how do we reflect this corporately? This is the key. For the life of me, it fr it frustrates me to have this not fleshed out corporately. Yeah, that's the problem, man. Hey, now I love that because this is where we're going to in scripture. I love uh, Andre's comment set this up what we're going to in scripture. And so Good listen, job, you all, here's one thing we got to understand. And I want everybody to take a pause. Everybody that's on the panel with me, everybody that's on the sidelines, take a pause. I want you to take a breath because we got to make sure that we're not so careful to point the finger as if there's something in us that if we self-examine might not stand in the way of unity. That's good. Because you know our eyes see out. But the, I'm so glad the Bible calls itself a mirror. And until you read it, you don't really know what you look like. Oh, mm, God. That's right. That's so, right. So, so, so let's go to what the Word says. Because you know what, Ron? And let me go ahead and just read it and then I'll say something. Then we can. 2 Corinthians chapter 14. This is only one of them. Chapter 13, verse 11 says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Look at what it says strive for. The thing that most Americans don't like and American Christians don't like. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Uh-oh, this is a curse word to American Christians. Be of one. How many minds? One. One, one mind. And then right after that it says live in peace. 
And then, and then it says and. Y'all know how y'all know how English work. It pretty much said if you do the it's a list of things. Then it says and the God of love and peace will be with you. But he won't be, but will he be with you if we don't live in peace because we are not wanting to be of one mind and encourage one another and strive for full restoration. See, here's the thing that we got to understand because you know what's funny? It's funny how we as American Christians, we'll never say it with our mouths, but we really have the pride to think that I can tell and make my faith in my Christianity because we all have been intoxicated, like I've said before, <laughs> by the freedom of choice. We choose everything in America, so now we think we get to choose parts of the Bible we like and the Jesus that we want to tell and make and put on us like us a tell and make jacket. So isn't it funny, my experience in ministry, and I know others who preached the whole truth, it's amazing how people say you're preaching sound doctrine, but then they say it's ju that's just your opinion, Crawley. When I preach on when I preach against women pastors, when I preach against the LGBT, when I preach against musicians uh, and, and, and stuff like that, because you know what, we all get sidetracked when that subject come up that's close to our heart. You know what? Because we don't like all of the Bible. We only <laughs> like the parts of the Bible that, that, that don't go against the grain of what we do want and what we do and don't like. So with that scripture, he says we be of one mind. How can we be of one mind in order to be weak? So I want us all to ask ourselves the question, am I striving to say the same thing or my own thing? Because you know what? I only want to unify with the Christians. Until because I'm not humble enough to allow them to invade my ways of thinking, which may allow me to recant some strong dominant beliefs. Mm. So it's amazing. So watch how you want to say, Oh, that's just your interpretation and translation. No, that's just you. We have gotten to an American part of you that you don't want to touch because yeah. it goes too much against the grains of what you really want to believe. Reason, the reason why that is because people <laughs> fail to realize that wow, influence wow, wow. is going, your influence is going to facilitate your interpretation of scripture. Because we all so, have to do that. Because if you if, if you influence from a false interpretation of scripture, that's your interpretation. You know what I mean? And so a lot of people are doing that. But when your influence is coming from pure doctrine, and, and now we can live in a generation where they want to say doctrine doesn't matter. But but it's like, right. I look at the chaos, you can clearly see it matters. You can clearly see that this stuff matters. You can clearly see. Look how out of control and toxic things have become. This is the part where if it was alcohol, a person might say, I need AA. I need some help. This is where we are as a society, where we're so divided that it doesn't even look like anything that God would recognize anymore. We got, you know, mm, and, and, and this is the problem. When the, when the master, the, the Messiah said, when he come back, would he even find faith on the earth? He said, would he even find faith on the earth? Which means what we call faith, when he comes back, he may not even recognize it because we've created our own idea of faith. That's crazy. We created, we, we created our own idea of marriage when nothing is sacred anymore. And I, nothing. <clears throat> mm. And I think that's what, we, and to go back to Andre's question, because Andre says, I could do that, but what struggle is, we can't, how can we do this corporately? And in order for this to get done corporately, everybody has to take their, their pause and take their own individual responsibility to examine self and fight self. Because you know, like I've, like I've taught, Ron, there are three enemies, and we act like there's only one. The Satan is not our only enemy. He's only one of three. Satan is our enemy, the world around us is our enemy, and all of these are represented in the Bible, and guess what? You are your enemy as well. The carnal, you are your enemy, and normally we don't fight us enough. So we think we're fighting everybody else. Everybody else is wrong. Everybody else needs an attitude change with me. Everybody else is two-faced with me. Everybody else is inconsistent with me. If yeah. we, in order for this to corporately happen, every joint has to supply to say, let me self-examine myself and let me go down and recant can't stuff that is easily proven in Scripture that I don't want to hold on to because I got news for y'all. I don't, I don't preach yeah, the true. truth that I want to be true. I preach the truth because it is true. And yeah. guess what? That means I got to preach some stuff that's truth that I don't even like myself. But yeah. because he is sovereign and the truth is belong is beyond any one of us, you got to sometimes preach stuff that you don't even like. Because the truth be is that. beyond you. 
Here's what's crazy about that. It's crazy about that. Is that I, the United States military is exactly what the church is supposed to be. Uh, the, the model, the, the taking these broken boys and turning them into men and turning them into soldiers, no matter what they come from, from the KKK or from the Bloods and Crips, they turn them into soldiers and they turn them into brothers willing to sacrifice their life for their nation and for each other. And, and, and so yes, I'm telling you that I've actually seen it done before. And when I say that I've seen it done before, I'm talking about total losers turning into honorable men because now watch this. They don't, they don't even know that the principles that build our great military is yeah. from the word of God. And it, I'm, when I say that, I mean some of the principles of the military, it'll be an actual scripture, but it'll just say a wise man once said, or it's been said, or, or that. And they're using the truth of God to develop soldiers, right? But the difference is the soldiers walk it out and believe in it. In church, you got a, people, a lot of people that just go. But they're not believing what it says. And we literally think the Bible is optional for us to follow. I, I, you know, we do. It's optional. Hey, we're, we're talking about why can't we unify? Again, we well, thank y'all so much. Uh, we, we're going to get back to that question there. Um, Andre says, I think we think too high of ourselves as Christians. And if people aren't like us or fit in our box, then they are deemed unworthy. Yes, that is unfortunate. Um, Shaliza says, talking about um, preaching parts of the Bible, what do you Think about women's hair being covered in First Corinthians. How do you feel about Pastor Gino Jennings? Yes, I've, yes, I've definitely heard of him. Have you heard 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 of his teaching? Yes. Um, I have. Thank you so much for asking that question. Uh, and I'll say this: I do admire. I do more when I think about Gino Jennings. I do more admiring than I think he's more of a man of God than not. I think he's more of a biblical sound teacher than not. Even though he has some holes in his theology. And even though he has some, there's some things that he say, and again, that's, that ain't too many. I mean, how many people don't at some point in time, but here's one thing that I will say about Geno Jennings. And yes, with the, with the thing that was asking the question is I truly do believe, but, but, but notice the example about what I'm going to say. I truly do believe that when he gets to that part of how he executed in his church, I think that's more of an over contextualization that does come from a pure place of trying to uphold scripture. Though I think it's an over-contextualization. Now, even with me saying that, I still remain open to what Geno Jennings does because I have to ask myself, as an American Christian, do I just fight against that because I'm American? And I know that don't fly in America, even in American church. So I do understand exactly where that question is coming from. And it is a good question. I don't know if I answered it. I don't mean to just like make it all of a subtle issue. But I do admire his stance, even though there are some things he is off on. Uh, but there's more things he's owned than he's also. He's yeah. no way near not like a false teacher. Or I, I want to say this too, that, to, to answer that too, is that, that, that uh, what, what I love about him, honestly, is that he does put out standard, right? Anything that holds standard. Because I would rather, I would rather. Let me tell y'all something about me, and and part of the reason why I'm so weird, I guess, is because I would rather fight. I was telling a, a Apostle Harper this. I would rather follow an obedient fool for God than an intellectual. Who's not, who believes in God, an intellectual who believes in God, but not going to obey or do anything until they understand. Because they, 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 their obedience is based off what they can understand. I would rather follow a, a, a fool for God who's going <laughs> to obey. If God say, go do this, and it sounds crazy, and they do it, I would rather follow that person than follow somebody who's an intellectual, but unwilling to do anything until they understand it. <clears throat> and the reason why is because we miss opportunities to just trust God, which develops our faith, which, which we, you know, and, and we, we neglect his ability to teach us. And so when we, when we start trying to manage what God is saying and doing, we start manipulating. And this is what causes more division. Because one of the things yes, we sir. talk about this unifying is we really, it's really the real from the fake. Because the, 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 the real and the fake both know the same word. So it's, that's true, that's true. It, it really is, the division is the real from the fake, the wheat from the tare, the sheep from the goats, you know, they don't, but they own the same farm, they own the same plantation, whatever you want to call it. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh huh. No, so I just want to set up this, uh, we're going into the last slide, and I that's think right. this verse of scripture, Ron, is going to set us up for this last slide. Read this. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10 says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree 
that all of you agree mm -hmm. with one another in what you say. <laughs> all of you agree with one another in what you say. And that there be no, he didn't say some, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly united in mind and in thought. Now, how do we get there? Here's what I want to say first of all before we go to the next slide. This is a good setup for it. That we all agree with one another. Here's what we want to be careful. You know, Ron, you know, oftentimes we say that that subjective, objective thing. And then not only that, but if we be honest as American Christians, we celebrate the fact that we can disagree with another Christian. More than we fight to agree with them. Mm -hmm. And we know that to be true. Why? Because American democracy has bound our thinking to think that, oh, that's slavery. That's the devil. And anything that's wanting us to think alike. No, I'm different. I'm unique. Blase, blase, blase. Yeah, you're different and unique. Guess what? There are over, there are approximately over 400,000 different types of flowers on the earth. Wow. That look totally different. That screams diversity. I didn't say 400,000 flowers. 400,000 different types of flowers. So the number is off the charts. But guess what? Every single one of them has roots, has a root system, has a stem system, and have a leaf system. So what we got to be careful about, that though we all unique, we all need to think along the same lines and boundaries of the faith and of the Bible. But I'm challenging our American mindset that think we have a freedom to think whatever we want to think and call it Jesus. To think that, because I see it everywhere, we bask in the fact that I could disagree with my brother. Well, we could disagree to disagree. And we think when we say the term agree to disagree, that that lets us off. Just because that lets you off the hook with people, don't mean that lets you off the hook with God. Because here's what God wants you to agree with. God wants you to agree with his word. And if you agree with God's word, you're going to agree with everybody else who agree with God's word. But guess what? We don't because it goes back to what Kathleen said earlier and what Duke was mentioning. We don't want to do the work to be agreeable in spirit. Yeah. We, we want, and it's amazing. We agree more with the world than with the church. Yeah. Isn't, isn't it when we go to the world, oh, I agree with the LGBT to a certain extent. They need love, this and that. And we go out our way to prove how much we agree with TV and BET in the world. But when someone else in the church, oh, no, I don't fool with him. <laughs> Why is that? Because we are... We, we fight what he says right here, that you all agree with one another. Now, what is it going to take to agree? Because those of y'all that don't study scripture, stop bringing feelings to the fight. When somebody posts something on social media, and myself, I'm not the only one to do it, you bring more feelings to the fight. It's amazing that scripture is never brought up, but your feelings and the American way is. And I'm sitting back there, okay, but well, what do you think about the Bible verse? Now, we ain't get to the Bible verse. Crawley, you this. Okay, well, forget Crawley. What do we think about with the Bible verse? No one ever brings it up because you know what? Most people don't study the Bible, not just to preach. Right. You don't study it to live and to make your mindset more compatible with Jesus. Because right. I promise you, more people who, the people who really study, a lot of the stuff that the average Christian get hung up in on social media, the, the, those apologists and stuff, it's not even a thought to them. It's already a subtle issue. And we are, people who study, we agree on a whole lot more than we disagree on. And most people are not agreeable in spirit because most people don't take the time to search God's yeah, scriptures yeah, and yeah. then be willing to have the humility to recant the things that they want to believe. Right. And, 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 and this is why our, when you talk about unity, this is why our, our marriages are falling apart. This is why the relationships and, you know, friends and family and brothers and sisters can go years without talking to each other. And offense rules our nation and all these principalities and rulers of darkness right. rule our nation. Because if nobody's reading the word of God and the people that are reading the word of God are interpreting their own way, that's just another form of godliness. Then you got a smaller group that's doing it the right way. And the smallest group has the most power which ends up which means they're getting it from both sides they're getting it from the people with the form of godliness and again from getting it from the people that don't hey, believe in God. i like what i like what susie says we can't unite together in oneness hey, unless susie. our heart is being cleansed from all things which need healing and deliverance and that's our issue right there healing like said, and we don't want to do the work deliver exactly we don't no. want to do it at first and, it starts with the heart once it's cleansed from all things holding you back and meditate on the words of god amen Yes, and that goes right back to that words of God and to the Bible because if you put that scripture back up, Ron, I want to point this out. Because I want us to leave tonight not searching and basking when we disagree with believers, 
but basking how, because like I said ask yourself this question do you seek to say the same thing or your own thing yeah. and so here's yeah. the thing about this when you finish reading it says that there'll be no divisions among you but that ye be perfectly united in mind and in thought so how do we get there that sets up this that sets up this last slide since we on the home stretch of the night this last slide and I'm gonna bring right back up Ron because we got to understand this is one reason we're asking the question tonight why can't we unify and one of the last slide and this last slide is this the reason why we can't unify is for this we don't like the road that we have to travel to get to unity and one of those roads because we got to ask ourselves the verse of scripture that i just brought up it's all in the word y'all he says that there be no divisions among you it's amazing how so many people scream for unity and unity and unity but you don't want to you don't want to take the road of standing in the way of the things see you want to i can really tell if a person loves unity versus it just being lip service because if you really love unity you'll fight against the things that standing in the way of it you mm. just not you're just not going to say we need unity we need unity no what are you doing to stop and combat the things that's making sure that there's no division standing among us. So guess what one of those biggest things are that's listed? Oh, I know it's going to get nah. quiet now with the church people. <laughs> so, so, so do we really want uh, unity? And okay. if we love unity, are we standing in the way of the things that's standing in the way of unity? So we don't really want it because we don't like that smoke. We don't want to travel around that road. <laughs> what are some of the things that's making us have divisions? No. Uh, one of the things that's making us have divisions is what? denominational oh, yeah. strongholds and oh, it's amazing man, yeah. we're gonna love our denominations till they die hey yeah hey i'm a and baptist ame coach yeah you better cut it Get out to god by faith hey man and yeah. some and some of them even say i'm non-denomination non which they act like a denomination <laughs> but just claiming the label of non-denominational so but we have to ask ourselves how oh, does our denominational strongholds and mindsets how does it feed into sectarianism I want to say this because favoritism, that's so, that's so yes, good. sir. That's so favoritism. good because, like, when you, you I, I have heard men of God who love the word say profoundly that you are not saved and you will go to hell if you are not water baptized. Then I will hear someone else with the same passion and zeal say it doesn't matter. Then someone else comes along and say, if you do not speak in tongues, you are not saved and you are going to hell. Then someone with the same passion comes and say that doesn't matter. Then th this doesn't matter, and that doesn't matter. Now, from and it's all confusing, especially with somebody who has the zeal not to watch this, not to know, the, the, not to just know everything, but the zeal to learn everything. When they see all of this fussing and fighting and 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 and, and all this craziness amongst us, it makes them walk away. Mm. And and and. and I tell people all the time, believers cre create the best atheist. Ah. Mm. The, the, the division <laughs> of do. the body of Christ creates the best atheist. So many people wow. are borderline atheists right now. So, Duke, let me do. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. I got a lot. I'm sorry, right. I got a lag in my thing. So, I was, but dude, I got to ask you a question. So, how do you see? Just ask this question. Then we're gonna move on to the next one since we got we're on a long stretch. So, how does denominational structures and strongholds help fight against unity? This is one reason why we got so many divisive doctrines and stuff like that. So, just just answer that one, and then we're gonna go to the next. One. Real quick, first of all, it's it's the biblical historical ignorance. You know, we do need to understand our Hebrew history and the origin because a lot of a lot of what happened when Catholicism took the scriptures, you know, they took the words, but they didn't take the culture. Because don't forget, God made a covenant and a culture with Abraham, and that was never really studied very well. But they, but right, the Bible but, was taken. Right. So, and because here's the thing that's saying, and pe preachers still say it. They say it, and I don't even think they realize what they're saying. And they start off with. Well, I know y'all do this, but our denomination believes this. 
I'm right. here to tell you that I don't care what your denomination believe if it's not rooted and founded in Scripture. Now, here's the thing. There are some things that we do got to understand that the Bible gives us. We got to, and we don't have enough conversation about hills to die on scripturally. But there are some things that the Bible does give us leeway to where we can do things different in scripture. So we got to, but we don't talk about that. But there's too many times where there's not. And denominational teachings and structures and higher ups. What is it? Let's be honest, y'all. What is it that allows your pastor to fly all over the country to fellowship with churches that carry your same denominational name? Mm. But having as much fellowship or said hi to the church right next door. Denominations mm. Mm. makes that makes us make try to make sense of that. Mm. So we, we 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 try to go all over wow. and we haven't even said hi to those who we would call true churches in our community. I ain't talking about the fake church. Yeah, we know all churches ain't a real church. But what about the ones that you yourself would dictate would say is a remnant church? And you haven't fellowship with them. You want to know why? Denominational structures and want to be somebody in this life in the name of Jesus causes all this type of stuff. We talk about stuff that stand, yeah, this type of stuff that stands in the way of unity. Divisive doctrines stands in the way of unity. You know, this is the sad thing. We because we don't reason together, we are, we can't begin to come to have the same mind because we don't have the patience. To reason together. What does reasoning together mean in, a, in one light? It means this. Two people holding two who both may be having pure, uh, that are pure in heart, but have two different thoughts about one thing in the Bible. Reasoning together says, you know what? You disagree and I disagree. Let's have the patience to research and get down to the bottom of the matter. Because I'm I have the humility yeah. to say that, listen, I could be wrong or you could be wrong or we both could be wrong. Let's research the scriptures and see, not point push, but let's research the scriptures. And you know what? I'm willing to say I was wrong. And after I research, we find that what I have been believing the whole truth. So therefore, what? Some stuff that grandmama and great grandmama said that you went to that mm -hmm. church and those y'all to go to these family churches where Bishop said this and you still holding on to the lie that Bishop told you 30 years ago. <laughs> that is, goes against the scripture. What we have to do is divisive. All of this stuff stands in the way of unity. So this is what allows us to have so many different thoughts about the one Bible. Yeah, yeah dude. and here's what's so interesting when I when I look at there's two things I want to say. Uh, one is our consciousness, right? Our consciousness. The word con means to do. It means to be persuaded and deceived. Con. And the other part of the word consciousness, which is our consciousness, is the word science. Sheer science. That's the word. That means to know. So even our consciousness, we are born with a false knowledge because when we're born, we don't know anything. All we know is what we feel. And as we grow, whatever we're taught, whatever we're influenced becomes our new knowledge. So right off the bat, with or without God being real, with or without God being in existence, we already have to figure out how to grow beyond our false knowledge. The other thing I want to say is the word divorce, division. The, the, the word die in the Greek means two. Two, yes. That, that, and James tells us we have to be of one mind. You know, like that's double minded. You can't have two mindsets in one body. Di divorce means divorce. divorce. Two, two, two voices. Two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you, because the word die, like dice, that's two dice, that's a die. And so what happens is, it's weird because it's like die, die. But, you know, when you have division, something has to die. Right, right. Hey, look, hey, well, I was about um, winding down here. Why can't we unify one? Thanks, Susie. She's giving some great comments here in the comment section as well. Uh, hey, Carl, you got what? what um, yes, one thank more you, slide? Susie. Okay, yes. Yeah, um, just, I got one more scripture after this and then we'll be done. But it ties into what Susie says. She says, how can we say we love God, but yet our mind can't even renew, uh, can't renew if you're reading and meditating? And she was talking about scripture. And then she says, the one before that, Ron, she says, how can we say we love God, but our heart can't even love others? And here's one thing when you go about even to the last part of the slide, love the world. Because what we got to do is we got to change what we think love is, people. Here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. The person, here's what I said about eternity. I preached this at Drum Hill uh, Church. Um in Drum Hill, North Carolina, a couple of years ago. I said this. I said, you know what? I said, if there's a way that we can experience heaven for a little bit and come back on earth, or here's one thing that heaven or the afterlife will reveal to us. It will reveal that there are some people who we deemed as enemies and mean that we would say, man, they was loving me and I didn't even know it. 
And there's mm -hmm. some people who we would deem as loving, who, who eternity is going to show us they were some of the most hateful people in your life. Why? Because those who love you the most has a genuine concern for your ultimate safety. And they are willing to say what needs to be said. See, people can't really ultimately love you if they're not willing to fight against your feelings. Ah. This is why everybody ah. needs to have at least a couple people in your life That's good. that is willing to hurt your feelings. That's because good. if not, these are the people who really love you. Now, here's the thing. You can discern if someone is just trying to be a contrarian versus you say, well, listen, if I really take the time and breathe and think about what they're submitting to me, if I take it, it, it would make my life better. But we don't have the patience and the love of Christ or the knowledge of the scriptures to even know when someone is really loving you. See, I love the homosexual when I say, you going to hell if you don't change. I love the homosexual when I say that is demonic activity showing forth in your life. I love the homosexual when I say, yeah, you're mentally and spiritually ill. But you know what? We say that's unloving because we, and that's why I get my book, because I talk about the New Age vernacular, because the English vernacular says love equals acceptance. And that's not a biblical definition of what love truly is. So the last thing that leads up to is, because we're getting ready to glow, is the love of the world. One of the reasons that's fighting Christian unity is because there are some Christians and some Christian churches out of ignorance, even meaning well, but they love the world too much. They're thinking that, listen, I got to bring everybody in. And then the true remedy is saying, I can't be seen with you because that's not godly or you're not giving off a biblical representation. So that's one of the things that's fighting unity right there. But the last scripture that we're going to bring up, Ron, before we close is this. And y'all have known this. Y'all have seen this before because let's act. God has a formula that can bring unity. But I don't think we're going to like it. Because we have seen men abuse it, and so we have overcorrected this. So, so let me let me show you this. Hold on, I, I shared the yeah. wrong thing. Again, why can't we unify, man? It's been a great show, and thank y'all so much for definitely um, um sticking out there with us. Yes, yes. They, they love materialism. They love materialism and lavish lifestyle. Yes, hey, because our motives are off. Our motives are off track. Okay. Yes. Here is a scripture, and I know we're not going to like this, but God showed us the way to unity. And here it is. Let me start at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. For what? Why did he give us these people? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry. I'm not even going to get into why we really don't know what real church is for, because church is here to help people do the work of ministry, not forever rely on the pastor doing all the ministry, but that's neat. I'm not getting into that tonight. But keep reading. He gave us those people for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now look at verses 13. Verses 13 is, says this, exactly what the topic of the night is. Until we all come into the what? Unity of faith. Unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. But let me go back up because we're not going to like this because these positions are held by men that are flawed. And we have to have the... And isn't, isn't it amazing that in life and everywhere else we understand the power of submitting to flawed individuals on our jobs, in our school system, at our play? When we're at when we're on recreation, we understand this everywhere else except when it comes to the church. Mm -hmm. Apostles, God gave to help us with unity, we have to be yielding to apostles, to prophets, to evangelists, to pastors, and to teachers. But guess what? There's also an order to that. Because pastors also need to be yielding to ap to apostles. Because apostles are here to make sure that pastors can't preach and teach whatever they want. One of the reasons why we are all over the place is because we don't want to yield to true apostles who are here to help us stay in tune with the Bible, regardless of when culture tells us not to stay there. We don't like this. Why? Because we've seen too many people call themselves apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers who have abused people. And I get it. That's true. But guess what? The abuse of a thing is never the excuse to totally avoid the principle of a thing, especially if that principle was given by God. So in order for us to unify, 
we got to exemplify. We got to walk into, we got to yield to what God wants us to submit to. And guess what? That is godly people who do have flaws. But God has called them. Isn't it amazing that your cat, isn't it amazing that your auto mechanic is a flawed person? He's not even a perfect mechanic. But guess what? You don't question him when you go and take your car to him when you know it stopped working and you needed something to happen. Why? Because you yield and you submit to his knowledge for one reason. He has studied auto, he has studied auto mechanics longer than you. But we have a pride now. That when we know that there's people who spend their life studying the Bible and we hardly ever read it. That we don't yield and submit to their knowledge. Why? Because we are Americans and we don't like that Jesus that you're preaching. We understand this when it comes to the doctor. You don't question the doctor. And guess what? Even if you will get a second opinion, you'll go get it from another doctor. You won't go get it from someone who never studied what they studied. So everybody that you submit to in the earth, you submit to them for one reason. They have been studying that area longer than you. And more than you. But when it comes to Christianity and the church and biblical things, we don't yield to people who we know study the Bible more than us. And, we and, lean to our own understanding. I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta say this too, because in case some leadership is listening, <clears throat> if God has called you, don't don't squander that calling. If God has called you in the leadership and be so desperate to build your church that you put unqualified people in leadership. Because that's another thing that causes disunity. Because the one thing, once you say church, yes. even if you hold up the form of godliness as a leader, broken people are going to come because they don't know any better. And they, they, they're going to come and they don't even know what to look for. But they, they heard that the word of God was here. They heard that hope was here. They heard that love was here. And when they get there, if you got unqualified leaders in position, you're going to slaughter these people. And, and I, I've seen it happen over and over again because the pastor gets so desperate to build his church that he doesn't build up quality leaders. And so I have to say this, uh, again, on why we're not unified is because we're too <clears throat> dispensive with discipleship. That, that is another, that's another thing that, and we, we, we have enough time right now. Uh, America's only 250 years old as a country. We can <clears throat> correct the issue. We can change the momentum. It's not too late. It's just habit right now. <laughs> it's just right. habit. Again, hey, we want to thank you all so much. Again, when it comes about unity and, and, and why can't we be unified, you know, I'll, I'll say this again. It's all, all about we have to be intentional about doing it, sacrifice it to ourselves, sacrifice it to what the truth says, <clears throat> as, as every, everyone was saying on here. Okay, again, how bad do you really want unity? That's all the, things are possible. Ron, okay. that's what you just said is the magic question because that's what I was going to end with. I want everybody that was watching tonight, don't get because you know when we sit and watch sermons, we said, "Boy, such and such need to hear this," or "Such and such need to hear this." But what right. about you hearing it? How Ron asked the question: How much do you really want unity? How intentional are you about it? Because what that should allow us to do is all yeah. self-examine to be: How have I standed, or how am I currently standing in the way? of unifying with other believers. God, help me shave off anything that is not like you and right. help me to have the humility to be open to what I need to be open to, to be closed to what I need to be closed to, and to research your scriptures, submit to the people who are truly ordained by you and not to have so much of American pride because I like what, uh, what my brother Andre said earlier. Love starts with sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice the carnal you? Because what sacrifice is going to mean, in order to lean into unity, you're going to have to claim less rights. Right. See, we as Christians, we got an example of Jesus Christ. He showed us how to relinquish rights that we really have. He had a right to speak up before the Sanhedrin, but he didn't for the greater good. And if we're going to lean into unity, we have to learn how to have the humility to not claim so many of our rights that we do have. But yep. sometimes will I not claim a right if it's for the better good of the gospel, if it's to make sure that I don't stand in the way or cause the Bible to be blasphemed, uh, whether that be women not being submitted to their husbands, whether that be irresponsible men not putting their women in position to do what they need to do in the home, whatever the case may be. Everything that we're not used to as a people, as Americans, and I get it, because African Americans, we are used to, listen, we need to work and make all this money because we're not used to having it. So it is our turn to have money. But let me say this to you. Don't love this life so much that you're willing to ignore godly things. 
And that's even including unity. And I'll leave with that tonight. So, again, thank y'all so much for watching. Y'all input has been great. Yes, thank you so has. much, Pastor Duke, for your time. And, Ron, it's always been good doing this with you. Thank always. you. Hey, you all have a blessed one out there. And we'll see you again. And thank you all to all the advertisers and sponsors. All right, go ahead on and um, get in contact with them. All right, thank you for everyone that was tuning in on um, Savior Connect. We'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>